Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Should AEW fire CM Punk? Or, I mean, maybe we'll talk about, like, should they fire the whole lot of them? Like, I, I think we just need to kind of just dive into all of this. Every single thing that's happened here. I'm Luke Owen, D-A-D. That is Tempest. You're somehow still your gem, that champion. We are two-thirds of the Blackpool Content Club. Pete is not here today. I, th I think feel like Pete's, uh, Pete's now the Claudio of the Blackpool Con. He's part of the group. He's never with any of them. No, at some point we might do a show with the three of us. <laughs> I think of, you know, this is the fifth one mm -hmm. we've done. I think we've done two with the three of us. Yeah, we maybe the first three. one and then the Roman one. And I think that's it because we, we did the NXT the one that didn't air. And the Jericho one was with Ollie. So you're right. It's two out of the five. Yep. And two out of five ain't bad, I guess. Does, is that what Meatloaf says? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, let's, uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, well, actually, welcome to the Rust Talk podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe, press the thumbs up button. Uh, thank you so much for all of your comments that we've had over the last few episodes as well. And this uh, past week has been a mad one here. Uh, like yeah. numbers across the channels have just sort of skyrocketed and stuff because people are so into this story. This story... Someone mentioned this on Twitter yesterday, and actually, I'm, I'm going to slightly disagree. They said Vince McMahon retiring is the biggest story of the year. Going by the numbers that we have had across WrestleTalk and, and the WrestleTalk podcast, this is the biggest story of the year. This seems to be the story that is driving the most traffic to not just our channel. Five will pass 10K subscribers on, on Patreon uh -huh. off the back of this story. Like, this story feels like the biggest thing from this year. I mean, it is wild. I'm not going to say that Vince McMahon retiring is not the biggest thing, because obviously that is, I think, the biggest story in maybe wrestling history. But, yeah, this is a big old bunch of news, and it never seems to stop, it's and everybody wants to know about what happened. as well. Yeah. I, I did my news episode yesterday, the Rest Talk News episode, uh, on the Wednesday. And in that video, I said, look, that's as currently as it stands at the time of this recording. By the time this video comes out, things may have changed. By the time the video had come out, Justin Barrasso had posted a story being like, yeah, uh, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, Kenny Omega, and Michael Nakazawa, Christopher Daniels, Pat Buck, and Brandon, Brandon Cutler. Cutler have all been suspended. Mm -hmm. Like at the time when I did my news, it was just like, there are suspensions, but no one knows who they are or if they've even happened at all. And as, we, as it currently stands at the moment, the elite and the other names that we mentioned there have been suspended, including like head of talent relations, Christopher Daniels suspended in all of this. And a steal has been suspended. As we record this, where Punk stands in all of this is unknown. Tony Khan had a meeting with him yet on Tuesday, and I believe he had a call with him yesterday on uh, Wednesday. This would be, and he, you know, to discuss where they're going with next. He was removed from the intro for Dynamite. The MJF recap package cut CM Punk out of it completely, so it was just MJF coming back. No mention of Punk on the show outside of MJF going like, oh, did you go to sleep on uh, on Sunday? And that was it. So we don't know what the status is of Punk currently. No. <laughs> no, we don't. And it really bums us out. Like, I, I think you're going to get a very different vibe on the content club today. And I think if, any, like, if anyone listened to our, the Patreon mailbag that Adam and I did uh, over on Patreon.com uh, Patreon forward slash WrestleTalk, we're kind of a bit bummed by this news. It's tough being a CM Punk fan. I think sure you and I is. even said this a couple of weeks ago when we did that CM Punk episode. It's tough being a CM Punk fan because, actually, I think it was you said in the office just before we came in here, this one-year period that he's had in AEW was like a perfect encapsulation of CM Punk as a wrestler. 100%. Brilliant work, unbelievably emotional, great storytelling, great promos. And then the biggest prick in the business. Yeah. Some of the best, like, storytelling and promo work you're going to see. Yeah. Because I, I, the stuff that he had with Kingston, that, like, two-week promo, mm -hmm. like, that two-week program they did in November last year was, like, one of my feuds of the year. Yep. And it was my favorite match of last year was Punk Kingston at, at Full Gear. I thought it was impeccable work. And then you couple that with the MJF stuff. 
that he did from Full Gear through to Revolution. Perfect, mm-hmm. perfect storytelling every single week. It was one of my biggest highlights of AEW programming in general. It yeah. was like I would pair that with the Elite storyline that took the first two years of the company to tell. Exactly. And then you go back to the first you know, first few months that he had, which was just like, I'm on TV having matches with Powerhouse Hobbs. I'm on TV having matches with... Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. Like Penta. I'm going to be on Lee TV. Moriarty. Lee Moriarty. I'm just going to have these matches on TV, and it's going to be like amazing. No one's going to be like, "Oh yeah, CM Punk's great," and like, look what he is doing to try and elevate this company and try and build this. And then he gets injured after Double or Nothing, and we have our interim champion crowned. But there was clearly something that happened before Double or Nothing, where the wheel started to come off. Yep. And for the last few months those wheels have been coming off more and more and more and more and then we hit a wall at at all out and everything went to hell in a handbasket and we're now in a situation where the evps of this company are suspended for a backstage fight head of talent relations suspended for breaking up a backstage fight and our world championship for the second time this year has effectively been vacated, and we may just put the belt back on Moxley again. <laughs> like, it, is, is, it has been an insane few months. It's been really, really wild, and for a very long time, I would get a little bit upset when people would try and compare AEW to, say, WCW and that sort of thing. It's Two very like, different things. Very different, completely apples to oranges, This last month has felt so WCW, just both on screen. And it's not as like bad on screen product as WCW was at the end, because obviously nothing, nothing has ever come close since then. But I can't get invested in the TV anymore because of what's happening backstage. Like I can't now fantasy book what I want to see out of CM Punk and MJF for the title because... Men can't, men are acting like children. Yeah. And I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. It's so disappointing. I was, and I don't want to speak too much on like people's personal relationships and everything, but man, when CM Punk came back, it really seemed like maybe he'd found peace with all of this. That first promo, dude, that was a different man. Yep. A different man to... I, you know, and this is unfortunately something we, I think we're going to be brought up a couple of times. A different man to the Cabana podcast, Punk. Yep, a completely different person, and it really was like this a, a real weight off your chest of being like, oh, okay, cool, we're not getting that CM Punk, we're getting a new version, two point Punk. I've been really disappointed and thinking, doing a lot of like reflection personally because I put out my video on Parts of Unknown earlier this year calling CM Punk's AEW run the best of his career. And I said that because it meant the most to him. You could see him in the press conference following Revolution where he's crying because people were singing his Ring of Honor song back to him, how much he loved wrestling again. And I was like, this is the perfect final chapter of CM Punk's career to really come full circle and be in love with this again. And the the all-out post-show press conference... It felt exactly the same way that the Colt Cabana podcast did, where it's just an angry, miserable man. Eating his cupcakes, like, into the microphone, not giving a flying F. And he was the ch- he's, like They'd just given him the championship belt yep. to be like, well, okay, you're back. You're on top of this company again. We're going to go with a run here. You Tony Khan sat next to him, and he's there being like, I'm done. I'm so done with this place. The rumor, like, leading up into uh, All Out was that he was done, and he was, like, talking about not showing up for the Moxley Punk match that they had on Dynamite, and he was just going to be, he's done with the company, he's done with wrestling, and he wants to walk out the door. And it really, like, disappointing is the word that I would use. Because, like, they, you can go back, literally on this channel, you can go back and watch my reaction to CM Punk coming back, and the tears in my eyes that I had Ollie Davis cried on camera because this man had come back. And I had tears in my eyes. Pete was elated. And the rest of that live stream reaction is just us talking about the excitement of this all. And then all of those reviews following. Cannot believe this is happening. This is the most exciting thing. And when you look at 
what's the, the starting catalyst for all of this, which apparently is Hangman Page's promo. Mm-hmm. One line in a promo. One line in a promo. And every time I watch that promo, I'm like, I cannot see what is so upsetting about this. Absolutely not. And so Because everyone else cut that promo. Kingston cut that promo on him. MJF cut that promo on him. Everyone was cutting that promo on him. But for some reason, and, I, and I'm going to combine it with something that Punk said in the media scrum, which is why I think it upset him the most that it was Hangman Page that said it. Punk in his media scrum said, like, he won't take advice from me. Because I'm a veteran, he wouldn't take advice from me because in his own words, he doesn't take advice from veterans. And I think he's an empty-headed, you know, and they start calling him names. And it must be those two combined together is what made him so angry at this situation. Because I've, I've tracked down the bit that Punk has gotten the Hangman Page doesn't take advice thing from. And Hangman Page is doing like a, a Q&A at what appears to be a wrestling school after a seminar or something like that. And somebody asks him, uh, like, what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten or how do you take advice or that sort of thing. And he just says, I don't know. I don't really like to take advice because I prefer to learn from like mistakes and just learn from from what works. And and he do- he says it in a very like self deprecating manner where he's like, no, it's not like, you know, maybe that's not a great answer and everything. But I find that, you know, I'm. I'm on top. I'm doing something right. I don't really want to change what I'm doing too much. I'll t- I'll listen. You know, he uh, there's been plenty of reports that like, oh, Hangman Page is working stiff, and people start having a problem with him, and he had to be told to lighten up, yeah, and then he did, and he did straight away. So he clearly can take advice, but his point was more that he likes to learn from experience and try and fix mistakes by just learning from mistakes. I get that. And I get that. I don't understand how all of this that like if somebody said that to me, I'd be like, okay, that's your prerogative. Yeah, totally. Everyone's no, different. I don't the bit that I think has wound me up the most from all of this was the line in the presser where Punk says that Hangman Page like jeopardized the first million dollar gate or million dollar whatever that AEW has had. I was like, how did he do that? Because he said a line and you got upset? That's exactly it. Like, he didn't jeopardize it. He showed up to work. He was he was prepared to do the business. He he dropped the belt to you. How did he put anything in jeopardy here? That That is the line that really has me taken aback by all this. Because he'll, he'll say in that presser that he's tired and he works with children. And his... Entire point here seems to be he said something that hurt my feelings, so I wanted to quit. Yeah, it's the same people uh, online that will call someone a snowflake because they get too offended by something. But then if something goes against their beliefs, they'll be really up in arms and offended by it. And they don't see the irony in shouting, calling someone a snowflake, but you also getting offended by something. And I think CM Punk is feels like it's the exact same scenario. Like he can't see in his mind. He's the adult in this in this conversation and Mm -hmm. everyone else around him is acting like children and yet he's going out there acting the most childish eating a muffin into the middle of a camera like and and highlighting the muffin place that he's getting this thing from being like oh yeah you should all go there and like i'm I'm done i'm tired then starting calling people names and just like calling people out in a professional environment calling people out i was trying to explain the situation to my wife because i got home yesterday from work on, on the wednesday and i was like Dude, the news I had this morning, like, you know, because I'd been off for a couple of days. I was like, you wouldn't believe the things that have happened since Sunday. And I was explaining all of this to her. And the more I explained it, the more I'm like crisps on toast. Like, the, no one sounds good in this story. Like, particularly Punk. Punk does not sound great in no. this story. But like, it's so hard to explain to someone who's not a wrestling fan why all of this is happening. And it stems back because he said a thing in a promo that vaguely alluded to Colt Cabana, you could presume or argue. Maybe there's been more stuff backstage that we're just not privy to. But if there was, I think Punk would have just said it. Good, yeah. Punk's looking to burn as many bridges as he can. I think he'd have gone to that press and be like, you just should have heard the things they say to me backstage. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get really how we got here i wonder a lot if 
he didn't get hurt and then went and sat at home and thought about it for three months. If any of this happens, if he just keeps going to work, like maybe he just has a talk with Hangman Page backstage or something like that. But at the same time, you could do that at any point, yeah. you know, like pick up the phone. Yeah. Right there. Like everyone's got the number. Like I, I just going back on to, to page for a second. Uh, I've, so I've met Hangman Page. Uh -huh. um, I, I did an interview with him at an indie show here in the UK uh, for, for WrestleGate. Uh, is actually the very first AEW match. Yep. I, I did the first ever post AEW interview. That is sure. that is something I can take to my grave. I did the very first one. I interviewed Hangman Page after he had his uh, a DQ match with Pac because mm -hmm. um, they couldn't do it a double or nothing because of visa issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a, a nice little credit to my name. He's a very quiet man, and like the whole day, a very very quiet man. You know, he would talk to Pac, he would talk to other people, he would talk to all the wrestlers and everything. He's very polite. He's not an introvert, but he's not also, like, the loudest person backstage. Mm -hmm. And that's just, everyone's different. Everyone acts differently backstage. Everyone acts differently in a locker room. No one, no two part P's are the same. But, like, I guess the punk just can't, couldn't get beyond the fact that he's just a quiet guy. And the mad thing about this story is that a lot of this is centered around Hangman Page. Where was Hangman Page during the fight? Nowhere to be seen. Because he was just, oh, he'd already left the building. Yeah. He'd already left the building. Him and FTR had gone out to uh, drink some nice whiskey that had been given to them by Cher Delaware. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Cher Delaware is the true hero of this story. <laughs> I think it was time we all start to admit Cher Delaware is the hero here. I if, can get on board with that. Because if she hadn't done, if she hadn't given that whiskey, FTR might have been involved. Oh. Hangman Page might have involved. The story might have been so much worse. So Cher, you're the real hero here. Mm -hmm. Just want to, you know, want to get that out there. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different angles to all of this, and it's so there's so much information because FTR. Now, like bringing them up, they they did the interview recently where it's easier to talk about CM Punk being professional, unprofessional, and this and that, and not. It's, it's harder, it's not as big of a story to talk about CM Punk taking aside Will Hobbs or inviting people over to their to his locker room or Dan Housen or whoever it might be. Giving them advice, watching their matches, having people ask them ask him to watch their matches and him doing it and all that. It's like, that's all well and good. And I, I really do want to keep in mind that all of these guys are just people on mm -hmm. some level. Oh, yeah. You know, these, these are all just humans that all have their own... They're all they they all have their own insecurities and their own, you know, bits that make them who they are. So I, I never want to harp on people too much. But like Christmas Day. OK, okay. Which, which kind of brings us to the, the, the crux of this podcast topic is the con like the, the word around the rumors are he's done. Mm -hmm. And like that was Sean's report a couple of days ago was Everyone in AEW all the time expects he's done. And the conversation that he was having with Tony Khan, the conversation he was having is like, how can you leave in the most respectful way possible? You know, considering at that point he was the champion. It's made slightly easier now because he got injured in the, the Moxley main event, so he's no longer the champion. He's vacated the belt. Yep. So you don't have that to contend with, I guess. <laughs> and... But we don't know because we don't know if he's actually going to be released from his contract and he's just going to go home. Or we don't know if he's going to be brought back. As According to Meltzer, um, and this is, I think, mostly speculation on Meltzer's part. I, I will read you the quote. But this is from Wrestling Observer Radio when talking about the punk injury. He said, he may have already undergone surgery, but either way, he's undergoing surgery. It was not confirmed to me it was torn triceps, but it was confirmed to me that it's surgery for a torn muscle in the arm. So it's triceps, biceps, maybe pec, but probably triceps. And that is usually an eight-month recovery period. So he was going to be stripped of the title either way, regardless of the fight. So we are looking at potentially Punk being out for eight months. So we are in a situation where either he's going to be suspended, and it's not really going to make much of a difference anyway because he's out for eight months, or he gets fired, which brings up another tricky situation, which we'll talk about in a second. Or in eight months' time, Punk comes back to AEW. So let's kind of address them all in a row. Suspending him at least seems fair because uh -huh. everybody else has been suspended. It's the bare minimum. It's the bare minimum. Eddie Kingston was suspended for a hell of a lot less. Yep. 
so you could suspend him. You could make the argument it was like, well, he loses nothing because he was going to be sat at home anyway. But at the bare minimum, he should be suspended. You brought up this point in the office earlier. When it comes to firing him, it is now trickier because he's injured. Mm -hmm. You can't. It. I don't know because we haven't had this trouble with AEW yet. We haven't had a whole lot of firings and whatnot. But in WWE, as the only comparable here, you cannot fire someone who is injured for like, you know, legal reasons and everything. You have to pay them while they're recovering because they got hurt on your watch. You yeah. got hurt working for your company doing the job that you pay them to do. That would make it so until he's recovered, you can't fire CM Punk. Yeah. That makes it a lot more complicated, you know, and I don't know what that really means because if you then can't fire him for eight months, does that give everyone a chance to cool the F down and maybe get a little bit more of a level head about it? I don't know because, again, look who we're talking about here. But it then opens up a different possibility now because options are limited. Yeah. It, isn't it wild? Like you and I literally a couple of weeks ago when we did that episode that like a backup episode that we did that really rush job episode we did of the blackpool content club because of all of the cm punk news and in that the pair of us just kept saying they need to sit these people down just sit them down and have a conversation because something is going to explode and then just a handful of weeks later it did explode it mm -hmm. did come to a head i think we may be in a situation where yeah nothing was going to happen with cm punk because you can't fire him while he's injured. Uh, we, I'm, I'm going to presume that is the case because that is a precedent that's not been set by other, uh, the biggest wrestling company in the world, but other companies. Yeah. Like you can't fire someone when they're pregnant. Yeah. Because it is a, a, it's unethical, but like B, there's sort of like legal ramifications around these sorts of things. And actually, you know what? Meltzer and Sean have said there are legal issues mm -hmm. surrounding all of this fight and everything, which is why there have been no like official statements made. I think that's why. A number of the guys involved are suspended as well. You know, like, I don't really, unless he was throwing hands too, I don't see much of a reason for Christopher Daniels to be suspended. And the people that, from the all sides that I've heard, were more or less just there trying breaking to break up. up the fight. Up. I think it's just don't come into work until we've figured out this investigation. And you that's know, it. That Wait, you are thing. suspended pending investigation. Yeah. Like, I think that is actually a really smart business move to do is that. Everyone involved, regardless of what your in, your role in this was, like the story is that it was Daniels, it was Brandon Cutler, and it was Nakazawa, and it was Pat Buck breaking up the fight. No matter what your involvement is, you are suspended pending the investigation. Yeah, and the investigation most likely it seems to be coming from Mega because she is an impartial person who mm. witnessed everything that happened apparently she was in the room that's what i've heard uh, she was in the room when it happened so she's probably going to be the best eyewitness for this event so yeah you suspend everyone until that point why they haven't announced that punk was also suspended i actually say announced they haven't announced anything yeah this is only justin barrasso's report at the time of this recording it's only Barrasso's report that's saying that these people are suspended. Granted, I think we can probably presume that is the case because they were mm. all removed from the Dynamite intro and none of them were like not even mentioned on TV. Just Tony Khan said, I've had to I've had to vacate the belts. Like and that was that was all that was mentioned of it. So I'm gonna presume that Barrasso's right on this one and they are suspended. But if Punk doesn't get suspended on this, and then in eight months' time he just comes back. What message does this send? I mean, I think uh, I think it'll all depend on how everything is handled, of course. But no matter what, this is a message sent. What whatever that message ends up being, this is this is your your precedent being set in AEW as to how this sort of thing gets handled. Now, of course, I hope that this sort of thing doesn't happen anymore. I think the amount of backstage fights in AEW have been fairly minimal and certainly not this high profile or this heated, but if it happens again, what do you do? All of a sudden, then you have something to point to and be like, well, you did this with Punk or you didn't do this with Punk.
Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's the that's people highlight the Kingston thing. Mm -hmm. The second this fight broke out, people were like, "Well, you suspended Eddie Kingston for a hell of a lot less." So, like, the bare minimum you got to do is suspend anyone that punched someone. Yep. And if Punk's there throwing punches, which is like not just a report from like one side of it, it's from both sides of the story. Because Sean Sean's done incredible work on this, as he as he always does. And he's posted up both sides of the story from his various sources, like people who are looking at it from the elite perspective or are friendly with the elite and their version of events versus people who saw it from Punk's perspective and are friendly with Punk and their side of the story. And the side of the story is either the Young Bucks kicked down the door or the Young Bucks opened the door. But either way, a fight broke out and CM Punk threw punches, and a chair was thrown, and a steel bit Kenny Omega. Like, a lot of those, fa uh, those are what concrete facts, it would presume. Mm -hmm. Just whether or not who, quote-unquote, started it all. But if Punk's throwing punches, suspension. It's bare minimum suspension, because Eddie Kingston pie-faced Tammy Guevara. Yeah. Just, just a pie-face, and he got suspended for a couple of weeks. So you've set a precedent. You have to follow up on that. Because otherwise, if nothing happens to CM Punk in all of this, when he comes back in eight months' time, he is Lord of the Manor once again. And it's just, well, I can get away with anything. I did a press conference and let a muffin into a microphone. I can literally do whatever I want around here. Because I'm sat next to a guy who's told me I'm the messiah of this company. And I'm the reason we're doing Million Dollar Gates. I can just do whatever the hell I want. And that creates a terrible environment for a backstage locker room. Yep. And it's, I mean, we keep saying the word disappointing, and it is disappointing mm -hmm. because you looked at this locker room not that long ago and how much excitement there was, how much optimism there was in this locker room, and it's just seems to be just about the opposite now. And I'm sure that's a generalized statement. I'm sure there are people you know, I don't know how how interested in all this like Keith Lee and Swerve are. They <laughs> yeah. seem to just want to go and hang out. And... They're just happy doing their own thing. Yeah, you know. Like Freddie Prince Jr. said that the people he spoke, like his friends within AEW said, it sucks backstage. Yeah. Like it sucks at the moment. And that's so sad. Yeah. To have AEW be the miserable company now and have WWE be the the optimistic land of opportunity, super excited to go to work, new regime who, company. Uh, who could have thought this would happen? Who would have thought that would have happened? If you'd have said in 2021, hey, you know when you get to the summer of 2022, it's going to be a completely different change and everyone's going to be miserable backstage in AEW. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I never would have thought it would be the case. And I, I have seen some people who have said like, this would never have happened in WWE. Like BS for, for starters because this literally did happen in, mm -hmm. in WWE but I would argue that was way worse because that was Vince McMahon plotting Sean and Brett against each other mm. and making them hate each other even more to the point where they had a backstage fight because in his mind well that will make for a great Wrestlemania main event that we never got that we never got twice over <laughs> and then Survivor Series <laughs> happened and like he that was all a product of his own in a way, mental abuse that he was doing to both of them. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is way, 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 way worse. But it's also a very comparable scenario where it's like, it made people unhappy and no one wants to go to work. And it sometimes makes for a bad product. And what you don't want to do is have your bad atmosphere backstage create a bad product on screen. And what I felt from this week's Dynamite particularly from people like Moxley, Danielson, and Jericho, who appear to be the three that have really stood up to be like, we're the locker room leaders around here. They, the three of them felt like on this episode, going out being like, bang, there's the reset button. Ignore all of this that happened over the weekend. It sucks, but we are moving forward with this company and we're going to bring back this company that we thought it could be when we, did, when we were all here in 2021. And I'm, I think that they are going to be the driving force that really pick this back up. And I wager when Kenny and the Bucks are back from their suspension, they will have, re I would like to hope they'll have renewed vigor to be, let's get this company back. Because it get, still is their company. It still is their company. Let's get back our AEW, our vision. Moxie was even saying that in his promo, the vision that we had for this place. And I think that he can rouse those, those three up to be like, yeah, cool. You're not the lead bookers anymore, but this is still your vision. Without you three, this place wouldn't be here. 
Let's re let's work together and get this place back to the AEW that it once was. The AEW that I know has spurred people to be wrestling fans again. Mm -hmm. I know people firsthand who were out of the wrestling bubble and they were like quite done with it. And then AEW started up and they were like, oh, maybe I'll give this a try and have fallen back in love with wrestling. And now they actually watch WWE and they watch AEW because their passion was reignited. I want that company back. I, I do as well. I mean, we're sitting here on Thursday morning, day after this AEW Dynamite, and still I haven't watched it. I, I know Adam was in the office saying, I stayed up to watch the beginning of it. I was like, Adam's blumpy. Stay, stayed up to watch Wrestling Show Live because he was so curious. And he never does that. Never does that. Never does that. I mean, Adam doesn't watch wrestling shows. Like, <laughs> to stay up and watch one. I have not watched the show and I've heard nothing but like positive things about the wrestling show that it was, but I don't have the urgency to, to watch it right now because it's so the antithesis of what I want AEW to be. I watch all of my media based on the vibes mm -hmm. just if it is good it doesn't matter if it's a good movie or a bad movie if it's good vibes it's a good time this past month of aew has been bad vibes it's been bad vibes and honestly this whole situation if this wasn't my job i would probably walk away from the company for a little bit i don't know if i could say permanently because then you'd have a great match and you'd be like oh, i probably want to watch that yeah, yeah yeah but i don't want to watch a company with this kind of behavior it's awful it's so toxically bad vibes yeah i hate Hate it. Do you know what I hate as well? So I, I this didn't really occur to me in ju until just now. I've literally just got Omega back. Mm -hmm. I've been sitting there waiting patiently, and it's not like I'm sitting there waiting patiently. They've been keeping him from me. It's like yeah. he was very hurt. Yeah. But I've also been sitting there being like, oh man, I can't wait till Kenny comes back. I cannot wait till Kenny comes back. I cannot wait. And then I got him back, and he's gone again. Mm -hmm. And that really does bum me out. Because I, I don't want to lose Omega. Like I, when I was watching that first Omega six man tag, there was a part of me that was like, "Oh man, am I in the death throes of my Kenny Omega? Like watching Kenny Omega career? Like are we really like near in the end?" And then I saw him have that six man tag at all out, and I'm like, "Nope, Kenny Omega's back. This is my boy. This is one. Of, this is the best wrestler on the planet. Let's go. He's gone again, mm -hmm. and I don't know for how long." And that sort of thing, that's what bummed me out. And yeah, like, you're right. Like, if this wasn't my job, I would 100% still watch this show so, out of morbid curiosity to be like, what are they going to do? And you had Tony Khan open up and be like, look, I'm vacating these titles. We're having a tournament. And the triple, the, the six man that we'd already announced, that's going to be to crown new trios champions. And we're like, cool, grand. And I watched the show. I really enjoyed this week's Dynamite. I thought it was a really, really terrific show. But uh, the speaking of vibes... The vibe that I was getting, particularly from Moxley's promo and then from the Hangman and Danielson match, did really make me feel like these are people going out of their way to be like, let's make this feel like it matters. And the world title in AEW, I loved Moxley's run, but it had that shadow of like, but when is Punk coming back? And when Punk comes back, he's probably just going to win the belt back anyway. So like, yeah, Moxley's doing the best work and he's probably going to be wrestler of the year. And I think he's going to get a hell of a lot of nominations mm -hmm. when it comes to our end of year awards. But it's a title reign that unfortunately is overshadowed by something else. Whereas Danielson and Paige went out and wrestled like it's like this world title means something and it is going to mean something again. We're going back to the start of this year when it was Hangman and Danielson and, mm -hmm. and Paige and Cole and we were having amazing matches for this world title. Basically that world title up until double or nothing when everything fell apart. So I've got I've got a lot of like positive feelings about this. But a lot of my positive feelings are because or kind of like actually still have that looming shadow of I don't know what's going on with Punk. And I got this real worry, this real pang of worry in my throat. If Punk does just come back and he just gets to walk through the doors again, which Punk are we getting? Will we get a remorseful Punk? 
a punk that realizes that what he did was wrong and that he shouldn't have acted the way that he did and he apologizes to everyone and they try to make amends which is actually what sean said in this report so like mm -hmm. aw talent if he doesn't go he has got some heavy making up to do he's got some heavy amends to make or do we get a punk that walks back and being like i'm king of the castle i can do whatever i want and i don't care about any of you and i'm here for another couple of years and i'm gonna make a hell of a lot of money off of it and i'm gonna make us a, a, make the company a hell of a lot of money but I don't care about it. Yep, and that would suck. It would suck. That would suck because I don't like that CM Punk. I, I don't. I'm not a fan of this CM Punk. No, it's very hard to try and look at this and be a fan. You know, and the title of this video is "Should AEW Fire CM Punk?" And I, my answer to that is only if they have to. And they might have to because the best case scenario is that he smartens up comes back, and they make a boatload of money off of this. Yeah. You're yeah. telling me you put FTR and CM Punk versus the Elite on pay-per-view, and it's not going to draw. Yeah. Even and it wouldn't be great. Even just even just Punk Omega. Any of any combination of any which, of these guys. Which is a match that when Punk came in was like, that's, the, that's one of the big dream matches that we're going to get is mm -hmm. Punk Omega. Yep. So there's a whole load of money to be made from this. There's so much money to be made, and it's all dependent on people acting like adults. That's exactly it. If you can just if you can work through these issues. Look, Matt and Edge managed to do some work together. Yep. Was it great work? Not particularly. Not a I, good cage match. The cage match was grand, but that was the third match. <laughs> the first match sucked. <laughs> but like, you know, it was they managed to work something out. And like I, I think what happened between the three of them was way worse than Hangman Page saying one line in a stupid promo to build a wrestling match on a pay per view. Mm -hmm. I would love to see everyone work this out and money to be made from this. But I, looking at the way Punk acted at that All Out presser, I've got this like real like there's a pit in my stomach feeling. It's like we're never getting back that CM Punk. And man, like I know a lot of people are posting this video and you 100% should be. That promo that he cut on Rampage when he first came back, it's a totally different man to the yep. one that we have sort, we sort of all out. Just one year later, a completely different person. And I don't want that one. I want that guy back. I yep. want that Rampage punk, that first dance punk. If we can get him back, grand. Don't fire him and we can go on with the rest of our lives and we can all have a great time. But if you've got piss ant punk, I don't want him in the company. Nope. And I want him to just go back and just sit there and we'll just have another seven years of people chanting CM Punk and that pocket of fans wanting to see him come back. And, we, and maybe he will, maybe he won't. But I know me personally as a fan, and maybe this is maybe I'm just a one big mark in all of this situation. You can have a go at me in the comments if you want. Maybe I'm just one big pussy ass mark. But I'm looking at that CM Punk shirt that I've got in my closet, and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I can't bear to wear it anymore. And I don't think I ever will wear that shirt again. I don't think you're wrong. Maybe I don't I, think you're wrong for feeling that way. I hope I can be proven wrong. I hope that one day I can wear that shirt again, but as it currently stands now, I cannot put that t-shirt on. Yeah, I mean, it's really tough. And I looking at uh, a number of the folks on, in this our company mm -hmm. that have spoken on on this in particular it would be easy for somebody who works here not to name names or anything but you know someone who likes wrestling and everything but you know this and then they don't think about it when they go home it's yeah. just like whatever doesn't matter what's super hard about all of this is you look at yourself you look at myself you look at ollie you look at so many different people and we do this because we are fans. I do this job because I am a fan of pro wrestling. I do this fan or I do this job because I am a fan of WWE. I am a fan of AEW. I'm a fan of every good piece of pro wrestling that exists. And I don't want my good piece of pro wrestling taken away from me. Yeah. And sure, that's entitlement as a fan being like, I want it one way and everything but 
That's what fandom is. You yeah. don't want the thing that you love to be bad and to be taken away. And I look at the CM Punk that we had from first dance until about revolution. And I say that if we could have that forever, I would never be upset. Nope. nope. That if we can, can somehow go back and fix the time stream and just never have him lose his mind over this have this continue on and we get eventually we get an incredible tag run with Danielson and Punk together as a team and they wrestle each other and they have matches with Kenny Omega and they have matches with Malachi Black and Andrade and this person that person all the things that we haven't gotten to see because it wasn't time yet makes me sad to know that there's the possibility now that we just won't get those things yeah but at the same time, if it's the punk that we got at the All Out presser, it's not worth it. It's it's not what we need. Like it's and I I, I think if I'm a Tony Khan, it's not worth the aggro. That's the thing. If if it's not what we need, and as much as I'd like to see all that, I would rather see AEW pre CM Punk than that. Yeah, and like I think AEW still can do million dollar gates. I think they can still do great buy rate numbers without cm punk i think they can do and i because i think that the aew fan base is a passionate fan base that wants to see the company succeed forbidden door sold out not because cm punk was announced for the show it's because they wanted to see that show mm -hmm. all out would have sold out regardless of whether cm punk was on the show or not Double or nothing would have sold out, regardless of whether Punk was on the show or not. So I think they still can do these million dollar gates. If I'm Tony Khan and I'm looking at this situation, I'm looking what is created in this locker room, I don't think it's worth it. I just don't think it is. I think you're better off having a better work environment. But maybe like I'm I'm, I'm not a money driven man, which you know obviously which why I would be a terrible businessman. So I'm a better employee <laughs> than a leader. But like because I'm not a money driven man, I'd be like, I would much rather everyone just be happy and I never do another million dollar gate than do twenty million dollar gates in a row with a miserable locker room. Mm -hmm. I would much rather everyone just enjoy being at work. Like as a boss, I'd much rather people just be happy to be there and have a really good time going out there and putting on the best wrestling shows and fulfilling their careers and having a great time. And that's putting out a great product for your fans, as opposed to having lots and lots of money, and lots of million dollar gates with one guy making everyone feel bad. I, I just that's not that's not for me. It's not for me either. And I mean. It's easy to say this, where it's like, well, Tony, you are a billionaire. How much do you need that million dollars? <laughs> it's like, obviously, that's not the way it works. No. I mean, you do that as a sign that this is working and that your business is successful and everything. Yeah. But I mean, bro, if, if why can't it just be like Ted Turner? And I never thought I'd say that about <laughs> Tony Khan, but it's like I'm re-listening to the death of WCW, and they talk about like, oh, this WCW in the early 90s isn't making money. We should cancel it. And he's just like, no, I love wrestling. I want it on my station forever. Never bring this up again. Because he had the money to eat it. Yeah. Tony Khan could have the money to just not do a million dollar gate instead. And instead keep his locker room happy. And I don't know that it's that simple because obviously we've seen that there's a lot of unhappiness across the board from a bunch of different people about a bunch of different things but if you can eliminate a big one of those things and still have a good environment or a better environment and still have your billions of dollars and your TV revenue and everything that goes with it, I think I would take that. Because that's the, the other thing is like, it's not, not, not everyone's going to be happy. No. Like I, I painted this sort of like pretty hedgy roses and all this sort of stuff, rainbows everywhere. Like and everyone's just happy time and blah, blah, blah. blah. It's never going to be the case. No. No, every, no one's going to be happy all the time because we're human beings. We're innocent men. We're just normal men. And no one's going to be happy every time. But if you can have the majority of people happy, and if those, if those people are unhappy and they want to go, you let them go and off they pop or they want to go and do something else at Grant. But you have got a, an apple here that is the, 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 a fish hot, rots from the head down. And unfortunately, I feel like our top guy here is rotting things out. So when it comes to that question of should they fire CM Punk, it's the, the kind of the point you made there, which is that it depends on what punk you've got. 
but I think if you want to, if you are Tony Khan and you want to emphatically make a statement that I am not choosing one guy and I'm choosing this company, I feel like you just have to do it. And you don't know, it's not a permanent thing. You can bring Punk back. You can have those conversations with Punk and you could get Punk to come in and do a big apology and then you re-sign him and he does come back to the company. But I think if you want to make a statement that says, nope, this is, I am choosing everyone in this locker room over one guy, get rid of him. And you make the decision, now I'm releasing him from his contract and that's it. <sighs> what a year. What a, I mean, yeah, what a year it has been. What a past, like, mad week or, like, couple of weeks it's been for, for AEW. But, yeah, like, it is, I mean, uh, you've, well, I mentioned this earlier, but, like, the, the Patreon podcast that Adam and I did for the mailbag, like, we are just, like, just, Adam was just, like, I'm just bummed out by the news. Like, everything about it just really bums me out. And I never thought I would see this from Ollie Davis. But we did the Rest Talk Behind the Scenes podcast that will go on Patreon next Wednesday. We had to record it in advance because uh, Ollie's off next week. Ollie was just like, I'm not having fun talking about this. Yep. I'm just not having fun covering this story because this story bums me out. And to that point, on the, the same podcast that we recorded yesterday, my point in all of this was, because I think it was more or less Ollie's point as well, whenever there was negative WWE news, because there was a lot of it at all times, people, oh, yeah. there was a million releases and blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows. You watch the channel. My perspective on that was always, if there's bad enough news, it will force change. And I mean, eventually it did. Eventually it did, and now there's the been better. change, and it's changed for the better. So much. My, my opinion had always been, this is going to get bad to the point, and ratings are going to fall to the point that either USA pulls the plug, because they're doing a million viewers, and that's still good numbers for USA, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're not getting what, they're, what they paid for, and they force change somehow. Every bad piece of news, I was like, maybe this is the one that forces something. And eventually, we got that. There is no change for the better that comes from any of the news out of AEW the last month. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. it's I, I. I hope there is though. I, I hope really, that there I is. Maybe there I'm is. wrong. Yeah, I and mean, if, I. I think you might be. But, if the, uh, but I the don't change know. for the better is you lose the guy everyone was excited to see who had come back after seven years because of what's happened. If that's the change for the better, it's a depressing change for the better. Sure is. It's it's a breakup that you look at and you say you're gonna be better off for it. But it's yeah. gonna suck as you're going through it. Oh yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I, I've I've had breakups like that. I imagine there's people watching this that have had breakups like that. And uh, do you know what? I and they did. Mm -hmm. Everyone kept telling me, like, dude, it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. And it never felt like it was, but it did. And maybe that's where we're we're heading at with AEW at the moment. It's like, yeah, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. But like, I'm not gonna be one of those people. Only because I think also it's it's a bit fucking stupid to be this. But I'm not gonna be people like AEW's dead. Like, mm. This is it. This is like AEW's dead because it's not. No. Like, this is. And the people coming <laughs> in my replies on Twitter when I post a meme <laughs> can piss off. Thank you. Because it's not dead. It's not in massive trouble. Like, the company will still go on, but this is a bad period of time for the company. Yeah. And companies have bad periods of time, but companies can recover from those bad periods of time. I really just hope that they can. I hope so as well. I mean,. It's difficult because you can be the number two promotion and do well when you're hot. AEW goes cold. All of a sudden, that's a different story. Impact Wrestling. Impact. I mean... Ring of Honor. Yeah. And you, all, you Japan. Yeah, you look at any promotion that's trying to go against WWE. If you're putting on by far the best wrestling product in the world, you got a shot. If all of a sudden you're not... And people aren't as interested in your product for one reason or another. You are in a real tough spot. Yeah. And i that's what I'm worried about. My worry is not like, oh, they're going to lose all their money and go out of business. That's not going to happen because, again, billions of dollars, billions of dollars. But all of a sudden, AEW is the cold product. Then all of a sudden, you start seeing it taped from the impact zone. And you yeah. don't have... 8,000 people in attendance. Maybe then you have 3,000 people in attendance. And then they're Ring of Honor. And, and then they don't feel big. They don't yeah. feel like a competitor anymore. These are just like, 
I don't know that they're going to lose half their live audience over something like this. I would wager not. But I think bad vibes go a long way in a company that's built on good vibes. Yeah. You know? There's an, an interesting ripple here. You know, the ripple effect. You and I have talked about like ripple effects within wrestling and yeah. stuff. And like, you know, man, what happens if, if Hangman Page just doesn't say that line? Yep. Like, what does the world look like? What does the wrestling world look like if Hangman Page never said that line? Granted, you can, you can take that back. What if Punk never did the Cabana podcast? Yeah. And like, and then you take a few steps back. It's like, what if they just gave Punk the WrestleMania main event that he asked for? Yep. Because like, because WWE handled Punk poorly, mm -hmm. like really, really badly. Like they managed him so poorly to the point that he walked. Yep. Because they didn't know what to do. They, a, they didn't know what to do with CM Punk, but B, more importantly, they didn't know how to micromanage a CM Punk and manage him on a personal level and deal with him on a professional level. And so he walked. And then that causes a massive ripple effect in this and the other. And like, I think that that's what we're having. That's what we're dealing with here in AEW uh -huh. is it's how you deal with CM Punk on a personal and a business level. And I don't know if Tony's the guy to do that because Vince McMahon wasn't the guy to do that. Triple H wasn't the guy to do that. Is Tony Khan the guy that can do that? I don't know. Maybe Gabe Sapolsky is the only person that can do it. Maybe. Maybe it's the only man who managed it. <laughs> I don't know. Most impressive man in all of pro wrestling, <laughs> Gabe Sapolsky. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Put him on the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's 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 being handled poorly in a different way. Yeah, you know, it's not the same kind of of poorly handled punk. It's di it's different from then to now, and I mean. Yeah, I mean, you can look you know at it, any... You know it is because they never put him on a pedestal. Yeah. They just held him down. Like, he, he thought he should be on a pedestal, and they're like, yeah, but you're not, though, are you? Yeah. You're way below everyone else that we've got on our pedestals. And then you put him on a pedestal, and... And this still, happens. Still, and then this happens. Well, that's what I mean. Like, you say, because it's a different thing. It's a different mess that we find ourselves in. And that's yeah. because Tony put him on a pedestal. And, like, you tell a, tell a narcissist that he's the messiah, and you've got, you've got an issue on your hands. Yep. Yeah. I mean, again, on that ripple effect thing, they give him the main event of WrestleMania. He's probably just retired by now. Yeah, probably. You know, probably yeah. just works and then is is eventually has his run and then is finished and then doesn't have to come back. You know? It's different different circumstances, of course, but I kind of look at it the same way as like, well, if Edge got that like one more year that he had left on his contract and retired at WrestleMania twenty eight, doesn't have to come back. Yeah. He had his career. He got to end on his terms. You know, it's just a weird ripple effect thing where if you give CM Punk that WrestleMania 29 main event, does any of this happen? Yeah. If Undertaker's match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania was good, yeah, wouldn't have come back for all those other ones. Yeah. Because his whole thing was just chasing that. I need to have that one last good match. I can't go out on that bad match. If Vince McMahon Sr. never sold to Vince McMahon Jr., <laughs> go back all the way. Find the biggest ripple effect thing yeah, possible. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, do you, but we'll wrap things up here. Do you have any final closing thoughts uh, you'd like to share on this episode? A bit of a, a different different feel episode. I feel, it for, it for was. I walked, into, I walked into this and you're just like, okay, Tepo, you want to go record? content club i'm saying yeah you did have a look on your face and was like i don't want to talk about this. i don't <laughs> want to talk about this you know it's the first real time that i've had to talk about a story in pro wrestling that just depresses me yeah it really is and it's very disappointing and i hope more than anything aew can rebound from this and get back to the company that Everybody fell in love with and everybody wanted to see take a real run to the top of the pro wrestling industry. I would really like to see that. I'd really like to see CM Punk as part of it. But things need to change. And again, if this causes change for the better in some way, that's all I can hope for. Yeah. Uh, I may perhaps I, I'm leaning far too heavily into uh, my DAD persona, but I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Blackpool Content Club episode of the WrestleTalk podcast. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Press that thumbs up button because the algorithm hates YouTube videos. So like try and fight against the algorithm by like pressing the thumbs up, leaving a comment down below. What do you what would you do? Put yourself into Tony Khan's shoes. 
What would you do in this situation? Do you fire him? Do you suspend him? Do you let him go? Do you let him just be CM Punk? Do you try and control him? What would you do? We're fascinated to read through your comments. I'm really looking forward to reading through them as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I have been Luco in DAD. That has been Tempest, your Jam That Champion. Jam that jam, everyone.